So, today we're gonna talk about some food facts. We hope that they're gonna be good. I've actually searched for some, some facts in general. I found this one and it is by the insider.com site, I guess. I haven't had a look at the domain, but I guess. And it is actually a pretty cool site with also quite really cool YouTube videos, but we're gonna talk about it a little bit later on. So to be kind of precise in like, I don't know, five seconds or something. But yeah, I'm gonna see you after the intro, as always. One, two, three. Four, five, and yeah, with that being said, hello, welcome back to the next episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. And yeah, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to record this episode. Also, the other episode that I've been recording today was just really amazing. I really, really, li <laughs> really liked it. Yeah, as you can actually see in the background there, it's a little bit like, you know, yeah, don't wonder. Man, also don't complain. It is just what it is in my room. I just like to have it <laughs> dirty. No, not really. Please check out the description or that description actually, because there's a lot of free things that you can get. First of all, there is the link to the podcast because this is actually a podcast and a YouTube quote unquote show. On the other hand, you're also gonna get three things as I said, for example, the free PDFs of the things that I've highlighted in this episode or in other episodes, if I've highlighted something, then it is gonna be in a tiny PDF. You can download it and print it and share it and do whatever with it. And there is everything in this that I've gone through in this episode, which is pretty amazing because some people like to listen, therefore we're having a podcast. Some people like to watch, therefore we're having the YouTube videos. And some other people like to read things. And this is why there is also the free PDF. And there is as well some music. So if you do want to have some background music in this video, then please also check out the third link. Or it's actually, I think, the fourth link, but third section, something like that. And there's also just different tracks to choose from. And they're all, I think, an hour long. So, so you should be fine. Everything should be fine. Should be good to go. And yeah, enjoy the episode. And I'm going to see you. We're actually going to go ahead, I guess. But what I wanted to say about the YouTube channel by The Insider, and I'm now actually going to have a look at it because I want to make sure as it's actually insider.com. I do wonder how fucking expensive this fucking domain is. It must be really expensive, but they're having a lot of cool YouTube videos about all kinds of things. Um, I would say about being an insider, kind of. So I think that there's often just some interesting things in terms of techno technological stuff, as well as Wired actually. Wired is actually also having some cool series, also with just uh, famous people and, and stuff. Like there's actually a lot of great YouTube channels that are um, talking about scientific stuff that, that that is actually kind of quote unquote based on a magazine or something and or just of a of a bigger thing as this is the case like the insider they're having a website they're having just whatever they're having it's, it's not such a small thing you know but of course there are also a lot of independent youtubers you know single or solo players that that are really having some really cool content but yeah anyway 30 food facts food facts 30 food facts that will blow your mind by joanna fantossi and it was actually published on march 13th 2020 so it's actually a really really recent one and a really new one yeah <laughs> i always like just the subtitles this is actually subtitle it's probably not subtitles but the titles of of pictures and this one says a girl eating an ear of corn at country fair or county fair County fair, I'm sorry. An ear of corn. I didn't know that this is called an ear. Now I know that. I know and I'm actually happy that I've read this kind of uh, sub headline, sub, sub, sub headline. I don't fucking know. Whether man made or not, food can have some fascinating backstories. For instance, white chocolate isn't actually chocolate at all and scientists can return, can turn peanut butter into diamonds. But I do wonder how much money that costs for, for doing that, for all the pressure and heat and stuff and whatnot. But I, I did actually know that that white chocolate is not indeed uh, chocolate because it's, I think, only some kind of butter, which you're also finding in the other chocolate, like in the dark chocolate. But I think the white chocolate is just the pure thing of it. But the last one is, there are quite a few interesting and fun facts about foods we eat daily and visit Insider's homepage for more stories. So we're gonna go ahead. I'm only actually think gonna read the, the headlines, but I, yeah. Many shredded cheeses are cereals contain cellulose, wood bulb. What? Many shredded cheeses and cereals contain cellulose, which is actually wood. Yeah, wood, what the fuck? What the fuck? Uh, green, yellow, and red bell peppers are not actually the same veggies. Oh, these vegetables are not always the same plant. Though some green peppers are unripe red peppers, Green, yellow, orange, and red peppers are all unique plants with their own seeds. 
I didn't know that. But but what I know, and this is something that maybe not a lot of people know, is that the vitamin C content of, especially the green ones, as far as I remember, the green bell peppers is just so huge. I think you just only have to eat either 25 grams or 50 grams for your daily intake. That's quite it. This is just really amazing. I mean, just compared to, for example, like, I don't know, citrus fruits and stuff like, they're really good. They're really, really, really amazing for that. Especially because you don't have to eat much. They're not having a lot of calories. And there's also not a lot of carbohydrates if you just have to look for that. So yeah, it's just an overall good thing to do that. Ketchup was once believed to have medical qualities that could cure among other ailments and diarrhea. Diarrhea. Well, especially if you're just having it as a currywurst, like here in the background, or just sausage with just 99% fucking ketchup on top of it. I think I've actually never liked it because the uh, the taste of ketchup is just so overwhelming, and you're not even just just you're not. You're, first of all, you're not seeing the sausage. Second of all, you're not tasting the sausage, and also in terms of the fries. But you know, with the fries, it's a little bit different. I think there is it or there it is quite okay to, to have ketchup and especially also mayo, even though I'm not eating this, but back in the days I have, and it's been a, a good and tasty thing. In the early 1800s, tomatoes were believed to have medical qualities. I don't know if, if it is the case right now, because of course, like they are veggies, they are probably really healthy and all these things. So, but if they just then count as medical qualities, we could argue about that. Per Fast Company, a doctor in Ohio in the 1830s claimed that tomatoes could treat diarrhea and indigestion, indigestion, whatever, publishing recipes for a kind of tomato ketchup that he soon turned into a concentrated pill. I mean, the, the question that I'm now having is, is, is this the truth? I know, is this something that that is the case? But I mean, of course, like, there is a lot of fruits and a lot of other stuff then that can quote-unquote treat or solve your problem of diarrhea. For example, I think bananas and plums, dried plum, plums, as far as I remember. No, dried plums are the complete, just opposite. But as far as I know, bananas can just quote unquote cure your diarrhea or something, you know? But there are some fruits, some other things that it could use as well. It could definitely be the case that it is the same thing for the tomatoes as well. Some foods like ranch dressing or coffee creamer can contain titanium dioxide or dioxid, however, which can also be found in paint, plastics and sunscreen. <laughs> Well, you know, you could also just put a little bit of sunscreen into your coffee. You could, by the way, I, I think actually, first of all, putting sugar into your coffee and second of putting cream into your coffee is I think the fastest way to just make your coffee as unhealthy as you can. Quite, quite. You know, because it, it, it really is not good. It's actually a really cool article because the head headlines are snappy, the headlines say a lot, but also the little bit of text that is beneath the headline and also beneath the, the picture then is, is not too long, but it is still just on point. It really makes fun reading this, even though I'm not a big reader. Titanium dioxide is, is a food additive that can be found in a variety of food stuffs, like ranch dressing, coffee creamer, icing and powdered sugar. It is often used to make whites appear whiter. However, for this reason, it also it is also found in items like paint, sunscreen, and laundry di detergent. That's nice, you know. Uh, while the FDA considers it safe, researchers link the chemical to inflammatory bowel disease, and the International Agency of Research and Cancer classified it as possibly carcinogen to humans, which I think just means that you can get cancer because of it. And in April. Uh, 2019, France said it would be it would ban titanium dioxide starting in 2020. Cool thing, cool thing. I really like that it when just um, no, not, not companies, but if and when governments are doing that because they just say then like, well, you know, you're just not able to use it any longer. Even though on the other hand, I don't know if just companies gonna use way worse thing than a typical ear of corn has an even number of rows. Thank you. <laughs> Ears of corn generally have an even number of rows, which is usually 16. The next one, I, by, by the way, I really love them. I really, really, really love corn. But yeah, one burger patty can contain hundreds of different cows. According to the Washington Post, hamburgers are almost always a mishmash. I didn't know that mishmash is an English word because it is a German one as well. Mishmash, mishmash of many animals. The ground beef we buy at the supermarket is made of an unknown collection of muscle tissues which kind of is a little bit of a gross thing. I wonder if it is just only the case in certain countries or if it is just also kind of the case in my place. Kind of the case in my place. Yeah, 
and um, but yeah, you know, it's a little bit of a strange thing. The next one is, the, I'm interested in the next one. Scientists can turn peanut powder into diamonds. We're gonna see scientists. <laughs> I just had to think. It's actually a German one, but I, I thought like, well, how should I fuck pronounce this in English? Uh, but I think this, as far as I can see, is written incorrectly. I think this Bayerisches Geoinstitut Deutschland, or in Germany, have discovered that since peanut butter is so rich in carbon, it is possible to turn simple uh, simple skippy into diamonds. All you need to do is, ex is to extract the oxygen from the carbon dioxide found in the peanut spread and then enact immense pressure on the carbon left behind. But I think and guess, and I'll just put it like that, that um, I better way wonder if this is written incorrectly. I actually want to look that up because I think it is. Um, I do wonder how 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 nice the diamond is. You know, if the diamond is then like Irish, yeah, it's actually written correctly. Amazing. If if you, I mean I mean like I do wonder if the since I think there is a lot of energy that you have to put into it, which first of all costs a lot of money and yeah, costs a lot of money. But but I wonder how how clean it is or how clean the the resulting diamond is. Because I assume that it is like just really brown and not like brilliant and stuff and yeah. White chocolate isn't actually chocolate. Despite its name, white chocolate doesn't actually contain any real chocolate components. According to Bon Appetit, the item is made up of a blend of sugar, milk products, vanilla, lecithin, or lecithin and cocoa powder, which I have been referring to lately. No chocolate solids. The more I knew. Fruit snacks and cars are contained uh, are coated in the same type of wax. <laughs> Did you ever wonder how gummy candies get that glossy sheen? They're coated with carnauba wax, the same stuff that is used on cars to make them shiny. Well, ripe cranberries will bounce like rubber balls. Cranberries are commonly referred to as bouncy berries because they bounce when they are ripe. In fact, bouncing cranberries is a common ripeness test for farmers and consumers alike. By the way, the most thing that pisses me off about cranberries is that you can't get them unsugared. You can't. They're not there. Unless you're a fucking farmer, I guess, you can't get them unsugared. I do assume that they're just really sour and that nobody would actually buy them, but but always. As well when you're just, I don't know, buying some some nut mixes and stuff and there's some, some cranberries in them, I, I can't buy them because I'm not gonna buy shit that's having just added sugar to it. And if the fucking cranberries are having that, then no, thank you, fuck off. In the end, which is a little bit of a fucked up thing because, yeah, you know, but of course, I'm, I mean, like, companies are using them just to make things cheaper, you know, so that if you just buy some nut mixes, it's gonna be 99% of the fucking cranberries and or the, the grapes, and gonna be, like, just, I don't know, 1.5% of the fucking nuts. Well, yeah. An 11-year-old, and I like this picture, by the way, an 11-year-old invented the popsicle by accident. Look, I do wonder if there's much left, because I do not want to make such a long episode, but well, I could actually go through it the next time as well, so... I'm actually gonna read it. So even though some details of the origin story have been debated according to NPR in 1905, 11-year-old Frank Epperson left a mixture of soda and water in a cup inside overnight. His mixture froze and he ate his newfound treat. Epperson called his invention the ep Episcle and began selling it all over Neptune Beach in San Francisco that summer. When he got older, Epperson's children began calling this creation Popsicle or Popsicle. I've actually, by the way, always thought it is Popstickle. Well, a farm-raised salmon is naturally white and then dyed pink. Fuck that shit. Like, I, I mean, like, uh, I do assume that people are maybe not gonna buy it because of that. I know. But I don't know. But I don't know. If I just know that, then I'm just for sure not gonna buy it. Like, I, I am gonna still buy it because I like salmon. But I don't also give a fuck whether it is white or red or just green. Quite. While wild salmon are naturally pink due to the large amount of shrimp in their diet, farm-raised salmon eats differently. In order to achieve that pleasing pink color, salmon farmers add carotenoids, which is a plant pigment which is made out of carrots, to the fish feeds to mimic the natural hue of wild or wild, I'm sorry, salmon. The more I know, and I mean like this just shows how much, uh, how much of what you're eating goes into your meat. I, by the way, wonder what it is like with human beings, you know, if you're just eating only bullshit, if you're only also gonna taste like bullshit. I don't know. I don't know, but it's, I think it's the exact same thing with cows, isn't it? You know, and all other animals that we're eating, if they're just having a shit diet, then uh, they're also gonna taste shit. Maybe, I, I assume. 
Apple Pie is not American. As American as Apple Pie is... What? Uh, as, um, as American as Apple Pie isn't actually very American. Pie was invented in medieval England, while the model recipe for Apple Pie with a lettuce crust was created and perfected by the Dutch or Dutch people. I really liked Amsterdam, by the way. Uh, last year we've been in Amsterdam with school. Cool thing. Potatoes can absorb and reflect Wi-Fi signals. When Boeing wanted to test out its wireless signal on new planes in 2020, uh, 2012, I'm sorry, they placed giant piles of potatoes on seats because of their high water content and chemical makeup. Potatoes absorb and reflect radiant wireless signals just like humans do. We do. Does that mean if I'm just having a shit Wi-Fi router that, that I'm just gonna put a lot of fucking bags of potatoes there and they're gonna reflect it to my room, making it better? It's just a case. Oh, can we do that? <laughs> the red food dye used in skills is made from boiled beet beetles. Is this, is beetle, isn't it like just, mm, an insect? Yeah, of course. But yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead the next one or in the next episode. But before the question of the day, you know, the question of today is, are you gonna change something that you're gonna eat or that you have been eating up to this point now because of the new information that you're having, because of the new shit that you know? I wonder. I really do want to hit me up on social media. You could, or comment it down. And if you're in a the podcast, then I don't know. You could also write me an email. Like everything that you can, you can do, you know. But yeah, with that being said, I'm going to say bye bye. And I wish you the best health, all happiness, and also success. And also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered. Basically, means your legacy basically means just being a nice person and being remembered as a nice person. Yeah. Three other questions that I'm having for you are why are you here, what are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose, maybe even a business idea. And with that being said, thank you very much, very, very, very much. And I'm hopefully going to see you the next time. So bye bye.